sounds like a plan. Now I can put my ninjutsu to good use. <laughs> then it's decided. I'll contact the Kairagi as well as the Tenryo Commission. My child's safety is in your hands. Please, don't let anything happen to her. Daddy's here. Everything's all right now. Come now, you should thank these two. Without them, we would have never been able to rescue you. Thank you, Miss Traveler. You and Miss Ninja saved me. Miss Ninja? Toma! Toma, are you here? I was completely in the wrong. However much you need, I'll sell it to you. I've got a warehouse full of stock, too, if you need more. Please, you'll have everything you could need. And without any duds this time, I assume? None! None whatsoever! Stuff with our side quit. I mean, Chief story Mate Jews is breaking in the newcomers, but I think we can spare. After this, the new crew member, one so team will learn. On they here. will serve hold as the support this. team for the fleet, ensuring safe navigation. <laughs> That's right, as one might expect. Also, their response. So, what do you think? Okay, so uh, we're gonna go get our under endings with Beto and everyone else. Um, uh, the side quests with Neko and the uh, Surumi Island things are, of course, back. But I want to actually finish these hangout events, and I doubt Zack will get on tonight. So that's why I'm doing the hangout events first instead of going to the side quests, which, you know, can only be continued after you finish it and then go back the next day. But anyway, let's go through this. <laughs> As I expected, you have a will to protect others. There are two main subjects that the Shield of the Crux focuses on. Survival knowledge and entertainment. As I was saying earlier, survival knowledge includes prevention of injuries and diseases at sea, navigation and cartography, basic meteorology, etc. You can go learn about these skills from Yinxing, Hoixing, and Liu They're all seasoned hands in their respective fields. I thought I would be learning from you, Captain. Each sailor has their own strengths and weaknesses. I'm no rookie, of course, but you shouldn't underestimate the knowledge of the crew. If there's anything I'm most proud of in the fleet, it's my people. Go and get to work. I'll have some questions to test you later. <laughs> I look forward to seeing how you do. I can't wait to see how you perform. Okay. Hello, Traveler. I'm Yinxing, the Crux's surgeon at sea. Whenever a sailor has a health problem, they come to me. I deal with it all, from seasickness and common colds to amputations and everything in between. I'd like to learn about treating injuries and illnesses at sea. Oh, I presume the captain arranged this, correct? All right then, let's begin. But first of all, let me ask you this. What do you think is the biggest danger that all new crew members face? I mean, wouldn't all of these kind of be incorrect? Because the newest crew members, I don't think, yeah, the newest crew members wouldn't really understand that danger itself is the problem here. Hmm, that can certainly be a problem at sea. But yeah, it's see? not the biggest danger. The most dangerous thing for a newcomer is to underestimate the dangers of life at sea. Oh, I have seen many new crew members who see themselves as young and fighting fit and have no regard for safety. They think that since they are tough enough to look after themselves on land, they'll be fine at sea as well. 
Those are the ones that always end up in the sick bay. Everyone should know that being a sailor, especially on a long voyage, is a brutal job in an unforgiving environment. We have to face malnutrition when we're short on supplies, all kinds of injuries and diseases that the harsh ocean weather can bring, and even the psychological problems that can arise due to isolation and the lack of entertainment. To make things worse, the lack of medication and treatment options at sea can result in even minor health problems becoming serious or even fatal. Hence the need for amputations. Oh, you probably thought I was joking, right? Well, that's not surprising. Most newcomers think the same way. But hopefully you now realize that with a little extra precaution, a lot of these things can be avoided. Well, I think that's enough for you to think over for now. Is there anything else you would like to know? What's Beto's view on this? Captain Beto? Well, out of everyone I've met, she probably values people's lives and safety the most. Although I'm just a doctor, Beto has given me the full authority to send any newcomers who I don't see as fit for service off the ship until they are ready to come back with the right attitude. Every time we're stocking up before a voyage, medicine takes top priority. I'm even allowed to choose the suppliers, regardless of the price. We have adequate budget for medical expenses. Do you know what Mora Grubber, our bookkeeper, calls this? A significant financial risk. <laughs> but Beto knows the importance of having a healthy crew. That's why she has authorized me regardless. She places her full trust in me and believes that I can solve these problems. Of course, I have proven her right. So, to answer your question, that's how she thinks. Is there anything else you would like to know? What happens to the crew members who have had limbs amputated? Hmm. Are you concerned about them? No wonder Captain Beto thinks you're different. There must be more to you than just your strength. If you can convince Mora Grubber to show you the books, you'll see there is a regular fixed cost, titled Convalescence Payments and Incapacity Support for Injured Crew Members. Regardless of the fleet's income, those who have fought alongside us will certainly receive their compensation every year. Some of those that have returned to land have started small businesses, while others have chosen to go out traveling the world. The money is intended to allow them to live their lives as freely as possible. I'm sure being based on land helps a lot with that too. Still, we can't pretend like it solves everything. They call them life-changing injuries for a reason, you know. But if nothing else, it's good to know that while Captain Beto is in charge of the crux, no one will get forgotten. Is there anything else you would like to know? No, nope, that'd be ah. it. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay, let's leave it there then. Be sure to take good care of your health. Okay. Might not even get down to doing stuff with Goro. This is gonna be very long. Sorry about earlier, Traveler. We were so caught up on getting you to join the fleet that we didn't notice we were going a little overboard. Good thing the captain stepped in. It's okay. I was hoping to learn a little more about cartography. Oh! Well, in that case, you have come to the right person. I'm not just blowing smoke. You're looking at the most talented navigator in Liyue Harbor. I'll start by introducing some chart reading essentials for new sailors. Feel free to interrupt if you have any questions. Let's start with what to look for when you get a set of complicated charts. First, you should always look at any indicated shorelines, islands or reefs, water depths, hydrological conditions, and other hazards. With these features in mind, you can answer the basic question of, can I chart a safe course through this area? Visually, nautical charts are a little unique. Unlike land maps, most charts do not have a fixed scale, which means that it can be hard to precisely determine the exact distance between two points. The most advanced nautical charts come with a supplementary chart, which has different colored lines marked on it to indicate distances. It's worth mentioning that under my direction, the crux is using these advanced kinds of charts. Some cartographers mark out other points of interest on their charts, usually with their own special symbols. If they don't leave any accompanying notes, they can be very difficult to interpret. 
for example, charts inherited from the previous navigator. <laughs> Not only those. We have tattered and torn charts that we've picked up from all over the place. To be honest, it can be quite a challenge, even for me. Some of these charts are really old and have symbols that I've never seen before. But if we don't decipher them, we will certainly miss many secrets of the sea. Fortunately, we have the captain with us. She managed to find some ancient books on semiotics that I can use to study the charts further. I don't think anyone other than our captain can manage to get these kinds of resources. Old charts and ancient books on semiotics are not the kinds of things that are sold in your average marketplace. Oops, I've gotten off topic. <laughs> well, that just about covers the basics of chart reading. Is there anything else you would like to know, Traveler? Do you have experience drafting nautical charts? Drafting charts? That's certainly a more advanced topic. To be honest, I've only attained a smattering of knowledge in that area. The charts we are using now are just revised versions of the ones left by the previous navigator. So my mapping experiences have been primarily limited to updating our charts to reflect changes in the sea. I think you can ask Captain Beto more about cartography. One time, the fleet sailed into an uncharted area by mistake. It wasn't long before we turned the fleet around and returned the way we came out for fear of potential hazards. But Captain Beto still managed to draft a simple chart of the area we sailed through for if and when we explore the area again. Incredible, isn't it? I was amazed to see that the captain could even do cartography. Then why does she need you as a navigator? Because I have the talent, and she doesn't want to let it go to waste. <laughs> she treats the whole crew that way. I initially had the same question myself. After all, in many fleets, the captain also works as a navigator. I couldn't understand her reasoning at the time, so I asked her. She just laughed and told me to wise up, saying that even Rex Lapis never fights alone. She wants everyone on board to master their role, so that the crux is not floating on her alone. That way, if the day ever comes when she's no longer with the fleet, we will still be able to sail onward without her. Captain Beto may seem aloof and even act careless sometimes, but the truth is that she's very considerate of everyone on board. Is there anything else you would like to know, Traveler? Nothing My else. pleasure. A friend of Captain Beto is a friend of mine. Looks like I'm gonna have to go up climbing. Stop on one of these. Oh yeah, this is actually taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything with Goto this episode. Just one ending for Beto. And then we'll, you know, go do Goto's thing next. I need to get the other side. I don't know why the music's making me feel really nostalgic because of how long it's been since I really have been messing around in Leeway and like Wanstad. Because I've just been in Inizuma ever since it came out. And I hardly ever come back. So it's nice, because I remember the days I jumped from up there and flew over here and climb aboard the Crux. <laughs> Let me stand right here. Now oh, come on. Hello, Traveler. Are you here to learn about marine meteorology? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In my line of work, I've got to have a pair of sharp eyes. I saw the captain showing you around the training grounds, and then you went to see Yingxing and Huixing. So I figured that she probably wants you to get to know the life of a crew member. Looks like Beto got the right person for the job. <laughs> okay, let's get started. First, I'll introduce you to the basics of meteorology. Marine meteorology basically means keeping tabs on the weather as well as other ocean phenomena. So things like sea fog, storm surges, water spouts, and so on. These are all potential threats to safe navigation. Luckily, whatever weather might be coming up, there's always some kind of sign that gives it away in advance. Take water spouts, for example. They're caused by high speed rotating winds on the surface of the ocean. They can engulf large ships and do immense damage. 
But if you know that water spouts can only form in an environment with high temperature, high humidity, and large clouds, then you can be well prepared. You will be even more alert if you also know that the presence of winds blowing in opposite directions, with a significant difference in speed, is a direct precursor to the formation of water spouts. And most importantly, if you spot a small white vortex emerging from the clouds, you should immediately notify the crew to steer clear of what's ahead. So there you go. Those are the warning signs of water spouts. I am proud to say that over the years, I haven't let a single one sneak up on my watch. You must have sharp eyesight. Well, I'm good at reading the sea, but I'm not as good as the captain when it comes to reading people. Do you know the small fishing village next to Wang Shuin? I heard that when Captain was a kid, she worked there fishing with the adults. Later, she made her way to the harbor where she struggled to make a living. <laughs> Managing to survive in an environment like that as a kid is solid proof of the Captain's capabilities. If it wasn't for her, I never would have dreamed of taking this job. She gave me confidence and told me I could do it. You may not have heard, but I'm best known outside the Crux fleet for a slightly infamous story involving me, third round knockout, and a few too many. Who would ever have thought that the rookie sailor who fell drunk into the sea and became a laughingstock among their now former crewmates would then go on to become a lookout for the Crux? But it's the unbelievable truth. <laughs> it proves that having skills alone is not enough. You need someone like the captain who is a good judge of character. Thanks for your time. I think I've learned all I need for now. Find me anytime if you want to know more. Zoop. Where's the captain? Just right there. Hmm? So you've already finished talking to the crew, huh? <laughs> I thought it would take you a while longer. So, what did you think? It was a breeze. I've got everything down. Well, you sound confident, but don't underestimate the shield of the crux. Gotta admit, though, I like your attitude, kid. Okay, let's get started. First of all, life on the sea isn't always plain sailing. Injuries and illnesses happen all the time. But what is the single biggest danger facing crew members? Underestimating danger. Hmm? Is that your final answer? <laughs> all right. On to the second question. As you've just learned, the fleet plots its route using nautical charts. The charts used by the Crux have additional charts attached. The supplementary chart has lots of lines in various colors for added reference. What is the purpose of these lines? Mm, mm, mm. It be to mark distances. Okay, interesting, interesting. Now, last question. On longer voyages, we have to be especially careful to avoid certain weather hazards that pose a threat to the integrity of the ship and the lives of the crew. For example, water spouts. So my question is, how can we reliably predict water spouts so we can avoid them? Well, the presence of dark clouds and strong winds in opposite direction, plus white clouds uh... <laughs> I can't even say it. Whatever. But this okay, is those are all my questions. Do you want to know how you did? Failed. <laughs> I gotta say, each time I think I've wrapped my head around how great you are, you surprise me with something new. You got them all correct. They weren't the most difficult questions, but they weren't ones you could bluff your way through either. You've clearly been paying attention to my crew. Okay then, now it's time to apply that endless talent of yours to learning some new recreational activities. To be clear, wrestling sea monsters barehanded is not my idea of recreation. <laughs> recreation. <laughs> Don't worry, all our recreational activities are respectable and, uh, above board. You need to realize that being out at sea might be fun for the first few days while everything's new, but before too long... Looking at the same old sea every day and being so isolated from everything can really cause people to struggle mentally. That is why regular recreational activities are an absolute necessity. We offer a lot of fun courses for our newcomer training, including fishing, photography, chess. I'll do photography. Oh, and thanks to Kazuha, these days we also offer poetry and music appreciation, as well as communal wind listening. <laughs> Each newcomer has to participate in at least one, so that they've got some way of keeping themselves occupied at sea further down the line. 
Of course, if you'd prefer wrestling sea monsters with your bare hands, that can be arranged. I was just kidding. <laughs> well, for today, at least, let's stick to the training schedule drawn up by Juza. If I remember correctly, it should be photography today. Come on, I'll show you. I like taking some pictures. Listen up, everyone can go back and call it a day. The photography session has been postponed. What's going on here, Juza? Oh, Captain, there you are. Well, Captain, the photography teacher just sent word saying that she's fallen ill and doesn't want to risk coming in in case she keels over in class. I see. That's quite unfortunate. Captain, if I may, I know a little about photography. Oh? <laughs> quite the multi-talented one, aren't you? In that case, why don't you help us out and lead the class today? Yeah, unfortunately, the original teacher canceled at short notice, so there's no time to schedule anything else instead. It would be great if the Traveler could step in as the teacher for the day. It's up to you, Traveler. It would be my pleasure. Great, it's settled then. Juza, let's muster everyone over here to meet the new teacher. Yes, Captain. Okay, that's one, two, three, That should be everyone. Take it away, Traveler. Before I begin, I do have one condition. Oh yeah? What's that? Since this is a photography course, there has to be a subject. We will need a model. Fair enough. It seems like you already have someone in mind. So, who will it be? Oh, well, most definitely I think the most suitable model is Captain Beta. <laughs> yes, definitely. Let's do it. Me? <laughs> well, well, we could do that. Or, Guyanstone Forest looks extraordinary today. It'd be a pity to not capture the scenery for posterity. So how about we snap Guyanstone Forest for today's class? <laughs> then there'd be no need for a model. <laughs> Come on, Captain. We talked about this. The photography class is supposed to be portrait photography. Have you forgotten? Scenery looks nice at first, but it gets boring after a while. I bet it'd keep the crew more entertained if we got them learning portrait photography so they could record moments in each other's daily lives. Those were your exact words, Captain. <laughs> were they now? <laughs> Strange. I don't seem to remember anything about that. Well, then in that case, how about Huixing? I bet she's perfect for the camera. Or Fuzhong. Or Mora Grubber. Even Little Yue. Seriously, Captain? Little Yue? You're just trying to wriggle your way out of this. This isn't like you. You are the captain after all. Of all of us, you're the best suited to being a model. I agree. You were the one who invited the traveler to be the teacher, so you should cooperate, Captain. Besides, Captain, you've never had your photo taken. It's high time you got one. You know, a heroic and striking kind of picture. We can even use it to promote the fleet during recruitment. I wouldn't think that she would be so embarrassed to take a picture. This is something new. <laughs> Real funny, guys. Trust me, Captain. You are the best candidate. Well, if you say so. I'm not one to spoil the fun. <sighs> so, what do I do now, Traveler? Smile and be happy. Um, like... This? Uh, you look a little stiff. <laughs> You're kidding, right? I've never had my photo taken before, but something this simple shouldn't be a challenge for me. It must be the lighting or something. You've got it wrong. And <laughs> Perhaps you feel uncomfortable with so many people around. I never said that. We can go somewhere with a better view. You mean, go somewhere else than bring the final photo back as teaching material? Sounds good to me. <laughs> That's a good idea, isn't it, guys? Hmm. Huh. The lighting may still be a problem. But I'm open to persuasion. If you have a suitable place in mind, I can consider it. Just to be clear, I won't necessarily agree. It depends on the place you have in mind.
How about Yeojung Shoal? We can enjoy the ocean breeze. Well, Miaoguang Shoal is pretty relaxing. But if I want to enjoy the ocean breeze, why don't I just stay on board the Alcor and enjoy the breeze with my crew? That'd be more fun if you ask me. So, I think we can just forget the whole modeling thing for now. Sorry about that. I guess I'll owe you a favor. Oh, I picked the wrong man. I picked the wrong one. Heh. <laughs> Hangout failed. Shit. You gotta be kidding me, man. Oh no! Wait. No, wait, I do research. Listen up! Oh, What's thank going God. on here? Oh, Captain! There you Well, Shit, let's see. Bro. That's oh? In that case? Yeah. It would be great. It's up to you, traveler. Or did that just give you all great. that it's failure? Yes, Where Captain. do you wanna go? I thought you couldn't continue from those unless they were, you know, white. Okay, that's one. Oh yeah? What's okay, that? Let's go, let's Fair go, enough. Let's go, let's go. So? Who will it be? Obviously, this thing would Me? immediately fail if you pick anyone answer. else. So but how about? Come on, scenery no, this looks. Those were your. Need you to be like, perfect with your choices. <laughs> well, then, or seriously, Cap, you are the Cap. I agree. Besides, Cap, we can even. <sighs> Trust well, me. So, what do I do now, Traveler? Smile and be mm, happy. Like, huh, it must be. I never said that. You mean? Sounds good. Hmm. But I'm just. Yeah, why not go there? A view overlooking Liyue Harbor, huh? Sounds nice, but. <laughs> oh, on second thought, I don't have any love for a lifeless gadget like the camera. <laughs> I'd prefer to be having fun together with my crew. I guess I'm used to that rowdy bunch. So I think. Oh, sorry you about gotta that. gotta be kidding me right oh. now. You've got to be kidding me. Dude. You've got to be joking. Is that like the Listen song up, choice Listen up, what's going overall? on here? Oh, Captain. Are we really they, go in well, your Captain. I see. That's quite unfortunate. Oh? In that case? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it would be great if... It's up to you, Traveler. Great. It's settled. Yes, Captain. It's like, why, why would Wong Shu okay, Ying be the one? I think that's just a oh, fail, yeah? like, that? route every time. Fair enough. So, who will it be? Saying go somewhere uh, with the... Guyan Stone. So, yeah. how about... Come on! Scenery look... Those were your ex... <laughs> well, then it... Or... Seriously, Cap? You are the Cap? I agree. Besides, Cap, we can even... <sighs> well... <sighs> so, what do I do now? Um... <laughs> it must be the lighting. I never said that. You mean? That's not really better for you. Let's good. see if it. Hmm. What? Why but would Wong Shu Ying be the just... one? Why? Why Wong? Why would this be it? It's not gonna work. This. I am convinced that this is just a fail. All these options are failures. The fishing village near Wang Shu Inn? That place is deserted now, isn't it? How do you even know that place anyway? It's tiny. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it on a single map. So you sure told me you once lived there. I'm surprised that you'd remember such a trivial detail. He's right, though. I did live there for a while. And now that you've mentioned it, it's given me the urge to go back and take a look around. Oh, come on. Why's that gotta be the, the right one? <laughs> no good view, just nostalgia? Alrighty then. Well then, let's go. We can take this opportunity to pay my old Tom a visit. Eesh. Can't believe I failed all those options. I'm like, oh no, you gotta have a nice view. No, I guess nostalgia is what we're doing today. But yeah, we're only gonna go with one ending for Beidou here. We're not gonna go with, you know, getting another ending. Because I, I need to wrap up all the final endings in the same episode. Because they won't take that long if we're on the final parts. But I did not see this taking as long as it has. And I also do not remember this place. It's been so goddamn long. Hmm. 
It's certainly seen better days. It was never that impressive, but at least back in the day, it was a lively village and home to several families. I wonder how long these last few old houses will remain standing. So what exactly happened here? Nothing as dramatic as you might think. A few small incidents occurred, and then people began to leave. Come on, let's take a walk around. People used to call this place Downriver, because the villagers apparently moved here from a place called Upriver. Wow. With them, they brought their knowledge of fishing, which had been passed down from generation to generation. I learned a lot from them when I was here. Now Upriver is long gone, and Downriver is all but deserted. It won't be long before no one even remembers what these places are called. To Zhong. Zhong? Hmm. I barely remember this name. It's probably because you were little at the time. Right. I was only about five or six years old when I first arrived here. I was homeless and had to wander around the streets. I remember finally managing to find half a rice bun, but then a stray dog jumped out and snatched it away from me. Half a rice bun was not something I was willing to give up so easily at the time, so I chased it all the way to this neighborhood. Then a few fishermen saw us running and stopped me. They were kind enough to give me some food. Seeing me stop, the dog also stopped running. But straight away it keeled over and never got up again. Maybe it was too tired or maybe it had starved to death. Yeesh. I never like hearing when the animals die. I went over and saw that the dog still had the half rice bun in its mouth. It didn't let go even at the very end. <sighs> Poor thing. Had I known the dog was so weak, I would have let it take that half rice bun. That's when the villagers here took you in. I could tell they were wary of me at first. I was the dirty little kid who just chased a dog to death over some scraps of food. But I got lucky. The village chief took pity on me and brought me to their home. That's how I ended up staying here. What made you leave later? <laughs> Do you know what the name Beto means? <laughs> Come on. I'll explain along the way. About a year or two after I arrived, the village chief fell ill during the winter and passed away. During that same period, the harvest was getting worse and the fisherman's catch was getting smaller day by day. Without the village chief to handle the situation, people began blaming each other. There were even rumors that some families had been overfishing and leaving nothing for the rest of the village to catch. But in the end, they all turned on me, saying that they shouldn't have ever taken me in. They said I was bad luck. They pointed to how that dog died on the first day I arrived. Next thing you know, the village chief dies, and then all the fish die out. They said I was a living curse, and the downfall of the village was all my fault. I told them that I didn't understand. I'm not a curse, I'm just Beto. Then some of the villagers started shouting, and drove me out of the village. They shouted, Nando controls life. Beto controls death. Beto controls death. Before then, all I knew about my name was that it had something to do with the stars. It wasn't until then that I realized that Beto was a constellation. And the Alcor, one of its stars, was an omen of death. Here we are. This is the old house of the village chief. I bet he never expected that the little girl he took in would grow up to be seen as a curse that brought about the village's total destruction. If you're cursed, then I think I am too. What do you mean? The animal Archon's Gnosis was taken after I arrived in Mondstadt. <laughs> is that all? The Geo Archon's Gnosis was taken after I arrived in Wiwe. Then let me guess. You got to Inazuma and the Electro Archon's Gnosis was taken as well? <laughs> well, you seem to wreak havoc on a grander scale than I ever could. Does that make you feel better now? <laughs> oh, I get it. You're trying to convince me that I'm not cursed. I appreciate it, and I'll take it. Oh boy, there's the old previously section track I used. Oh, the nostalgia flows in. I'm I'm just gonna say I think Beto's 
story quest, especially this part right here, is like, hands down the best hangout event. Seriously. The music just keeps coming on at the perfect moments, and just the nostalgia I'm feeling in hearing her story, making me like her even more. Let's not forget that the people whose names stick around are the ones who emerge from the stormy seas unscathed, and the ones who get swept away in the wind are the fledgling birds who couldn't hack it. I, for one, have never encountered a storm I couldn't weather. But your journey's far from over, isn't it? Just remember, there's no telling what else you might encounter in this vast world. So if you ever find some idiot trying to brand you as a scapegoat just because you're the one who lived to tell the tale, tell them Captain Beto demands to have the honor along with you. Remember, you'll always have the Captain of the Crux to back you up wherever you go. I suppose we're just two scapegoats looking out for each other. <laughs> two cursed scapegoats banding together for survival. Sounds like a recipe for disaster, but at the same time, I kind of dig it. I'm lucky to have a friend like you. Okay, it's time to get back to our photography. Right, teacher? I thought you might not be in the mood. Come on, let's not waste any time. Get it done while you can before I change my mind. So, do I need to strike a pose? Look now. However you prefer. All right. How about this? Now hold on, let's do it together. <laughs> the height difference, I tell you. Save. Oh, do I need to use the actual camera? Or just not have it in the way? I think I need to get the actual camera out. Yeah, I need to get the actual camera. Do you need to talk to her? How about this pose? Oh. So, is it done yet? Please don't tell me that it looks weird. Not at all. It's perfect. <sighs> Show me. Only if you promise to give it back. Yeah, sure, whatever. Now give it here. Hmm. Yes. I see. Alright. On behalf of the Crux, thank you very much for your photography class today. You've been an excellent teacher and I couldn't be more satisfied. Now, as Captain of the Crux, I am exercising my official right to not give the photo back. To requisition this photograph for future promotion and recruitment purposes. <laughs> so I'm afraid I'll be holding on to this. That's fine with you though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lumine's like, wait a second. Uh, the damn picture. Alright, but that, I, I think Beto's is definitely the best hangout event we have. But uh, it's time to move on and go do Gordo's other route.